Welcome back guys. What we're going to be working on today is the custom drip rails on the Cortina. So I've made my own set of drip rails. I've shaved the drip rails off, the old drip rails. There was actually nothing wrong with them. It wasn't like they were rusty or anything like that. Uh, this is a mod that a few guys uh, do or consider doing. So I'll show you what I've done. It's a little bit different to what everybody else does. It's not just shaved. I don't like the look of just the shaved drip rails. It looks like it's I don't know, unfinished I guess in a way, so I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so what I did, I got some 5mm um, solid round bar and welded that to the edge. So as I shaved the drip rail off, so one inch shave and then weld and then one inch cut and weld and continued on that way. Uh, until I got it all welded up. Once I had it all welded up, I've welded on this 5mm rod top and bottom so I weld the bottom as well and then from the actual weld that I created in here I've then got a burr and shaped it to give it like a radius and that's created my own style of, of drip rail so you can see there it sort of sits out a little bit and I mean it's not going to stop the water going down um, but it's not going to go in the windows anyway uh, so yeah, it gives it a nicer look. So what I'm trying to achieve here, I've just continued it down to the bottom there, so that sort of flows with the door. And on the other side with the C-pillar, uh, I've done the same thing. So I've just sort of continued it down and continued this um, curve there. So you can see the sort of door follows that shape. So what I was trying to do, to do the TF roofs, the turret, um, they're really flat, you know, compared to the uh, the TEs. The TEs a little bit more bulgy. Now I mean bulgy here. So here the 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 TEs sort of sit up a little bit more and then start blending into the roof, whereas the TFs they're very short, very flat. So they've got the taller um, windows in them. So the doors are the same as the bottoms, but the actual window frames are taller on the TFs. They said something about uh, they wanted more. Um, head clearance and, and, and visual, uh, you know, like more visibility out of the car. So that's what they've gone with that. But I like the TE roof. So I like that look of having a bit more here. So by getting rid of the gutter, the gutter used to sit pretty much close to the same height as that um, swage line in the roof there, or the fold in the roof. So by lowering that area there, that makes that area uh, seem taller and it gives me that look again so that's why I've gone for that for that sort of look plus I've never really liked much the uh, the chrome going around there and the TFs were different again where the TEs uh, the, the drip rails on the TEs come across like that the TFs sort of stopped and then it had a, a, a chrome piece that sat here and mimicked another like extension to the to the drip rail it was really weird I, I just didn't like it so I've gone for that look. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It won't ever be. Um, I don't mind that. It, um, it's my car, not anybody else's, so I, I couldn't give a stuff. But I'm going to bodywork them today, and uh, or in this episode, I guess, and then continue on with the bodywork since I've, you know, started and I'm motivated, I guess. All right, let's get into it. Okay, I thought I'd get a start on the uh, rear bar mods as well. I haven't done any of these bars before. Um, I'd like to find out what sort of plastic they're made from. I'm going to have to pull them apart. I've got a few spares here, as you can see. And some of them have got this like reinforcement um, rubber. This one doesn't seem to have it, but it could have been removed. Who knows? It looks like it's missing a few bolts and screws there anyway. Um, but 
it doesn't allow it to, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't allow it to close up that massive, massive gap. Have a look at that. So that's hard up against the, um, the beaver and it's, it just doesn't look right at all. I know that's how they were, but wow. It just makes it look really long and huge and I can't live with that. Uh, the also the other thing I, I wouldn't mind mucking around with is seeing I think the XFs maybe maybe XD XC XF had a, a flush mount uh, number plate light and it still um, <coughs> shone perfectly on the actual number plate so I wouldn't mind maybe getting one of those and then removing this little hump and putting a flush mount in there would look really neat a lot nicer than, than that and I mean this tow bar recess that's gonna have to go I'm gonna have to work something out and fill that in because that's that's shocking they should have had an option you know on to the second skim on this side we're looking good And I've taken the soft rubber uh, absorption pad, I guess, or I don't know what the hell it's for. Took that off the bar. Look how much further it tucks in now. Looks heaps better. Already off to a great start. Okay, all masked up ready to go for another coat of epoxy, the final coat for this area, I guess. These are uh, transition areas, so areas that are going to go into uh, something else that needs to be body worked. I'm not going to worry too much about, just do a little bit of work, but obviously to perfect it I'm going to need to body work this area and then blend it into there. So I'm more worried about from here onwards just to get it all perfect. Same with here, I'm going to do the C pillar next in bodywork. So this transition of you know what never needs to be done from here to here, I'm not going to worry too much and just do it later. But yeah, it takes a while to mask up actually. And it's the only thing that the newspaper is actually good for these days. That's it for this episode guys. Just kidding. <laughs> Let's keep it going. Okay, so I'm gonna do these C pillars next. So the X uh what? XFs, the TFs. Sorry, I've got XF on the mind because I'm looking for XF parts. Anyway, look, this is the um the Ford uh advertisement from back in the day. Now you can see there they had like a um, a C pillar mold type thing. The TEs had one too, and it was different. Uh, that's the TF one there. Now I've removed it and deleted it, so I've um, shaved that area. That's what they call it, shaving, I guess, and um, just made it smooth. So the TCTDs were like this. They were smooth. They didn't have anything there. And I like the look a bit better. It just makes the car look a little bit longer. So all the mods that I do on the car, I tend to try and um, enhance other areas, you know, to, to what I want them to, to look like. So this, I find, once it's all smooth, it tends to make the car look a lot longer in that, in that area and not so high because they do look taller uh, in the roof, the TFs compared to the TEs, obviously, because they are. They're, it's not that the roof is taller, it's just that the window openings are actually bigger. So, I've continued the drip rail on on this C-pillar, as you can see. So, I've just continued that, so I'll body f um, fill that. And uh, you can just see the welds there from the actual plate that I put on here. So, I'll continue the section from about here. Uh, do all the bodywork, so I'll get that line 
perfect again in that shape there to, to flow and then to flow into here you can see where I've masked so I'll continue that around there the bodywork there that's lead so all these areas have lead through them I'm not going to remove the lead there's nothing um, showing me that there's rust under it or anything like that so I I'm not going to touch it if it's not giving me any trouble then don't muck with it so I'm just going to bodywork that and get it all nice and smooth I'll stop at about here so that's you can you can probably see that masking line there so I just stop at the uh, start of the quarter panel what would be the start of the corner panel there's a small dent there where is it here there's a, there's a dent there that I want to probably try and easy bit first before I start doing the quarter the um, the quarter panel itself and then probably after that I'll continue into this area here so I've removed the seam from there and filled it all in so I'll do that area there and do the actual boot jam it had a little bit of rust on the inside on around here if I remember correctly I'm not gonna open it up now I'll show you guys later and then I'll move on to the tail light panel so that's had a mod as well but we'll go into that a bit later all right let's get cracking shape or whatever so in this case it's the roof to the seat pillar so find the absolute edge it's a little tricky because my eyesight isn't the best these days and then just put a little pencil mark okay look once again this is what I do I'm not a trained professional I'm not qualified so don't take this as Bible this is just what I do and then joining those edges with masking tape so I'll mask that area up so I don't get any um, body filler on the roof because as far as I'm concerned I'm happy with that shape of the roof so I don't want to muck around with that and then basically anywhere else I don't want um, body filler I'll mask up so the jam side of things I'm going to do later so I only want to work from I guess the round section of the trip bar that I've created onto this side, not onto the other side. I'm over here now. Of course, gotta do the other side as well. Okay, now the next thing that I check before I start is um, natural curves and where they're heading and if I've done a mod there how to keep that natural curve going so um, there's a big natural curve in the roof as it slowly makes an arc like that it's hardly there but it's there and so as you get to here you've got to make sure that you know this curve here so the easiest way to check it is see I've got a long ruler I've got a piece of aluminium there that's probably about a meter long and you can use different things, you just hold them at the ends. Um, you'll know, look, once you've got it in your hand, you'll know, you know, how to sort of guide yourself to, to see what, what it needs. This one here is showing, if I started like that, see that's not quite right there, there. It needs, I guess, a, maybe a mill. If that, it's only showing the tiniest bit of daylight from about here to here, you know. So I've got to add a little bit of filler there so that it meets this area which is a little bit fatter at the moment and there's no filler there, that's just metal and flows so that when you look down here, this isn't going to go once it's all shiny and painted obviously, it doesn't come out here and then go bump, you know, stick out there and then come back in or whatever. It's got to all flow, you know, it's all got to be 100%, unless you want to see all these funny lines and funny shapes that aren't meant to be there. The other one is this curve here, so this has got to curve that way. Um, you can see there, so you've got to keep that, at the moment it looks like it keeps it all the way along, and you've got to make sure that you do keep it along. 
Um, with the lead, it's a little bit funky. It was a little bit funky at the A pillar as well. So wherever they've put lead and it joins, say the turret to the C pillar, wherever it, different areas have been, those um, seams that are welded sort of behind things and they've filled them up with lead, they haven't given too much of a rats, obviously. The issue being is that the window rubbers, front and rear, they don't sit on this edge. They actually sit over this edge by quite a lot. So they sort of overlap like that. They hide a lot of those defects, but in this case, I want to make sure that they're 100% before anything goes on and you know, the rubber sits absolutely flush. It hasn't got any tiny little gaps or whatever that look silly. So if I put my straight edge here, uh, that's showing me a gap uh, from about there to there. You know, so and you can actually feel it anyway. There's like a, it feels like a dent, but it's actually that this area is high, and it hasn't met gradually. It's sort of met a little bit sharp there, and then you know they've left the the raw metal. They they didn't care. Yeah, you know, even that that um C pillar uh, molding that was here, um, you know that that sort of sat you know pretty close to that. And that would have hit it a lot as well. They're all tiny little defects from back in the day that um, the best way I can explain it is the designer didn't want those defects he wouldn't have he wouldn't have designed the car with those defects um, but the manufacturing process hasn't allowed to get the tolerances absolutely perfect you know so I'm trying my best to fix those as I go along all right come on come on you know what time it is that no, it's not gonna hurt. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so after the first skim and the first sanding, I guess the first sort of shaping, roughing out, this is what I've ended up with. So I've got a small dent there. I'm guessing just from, um, probably from welding, you know, it's probably warped a tiny bit here. Uh, the plate sort of goes around there somewhere. I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, this transition hasn't been sanded yet. I've just left it like that. I'll do that and that together later. So you can see this is where lead is at and then that's that transition I was telling you from the lead to that panel so it's not quite right so it needs a little bit more filler not much let I me mean, look at it looks okay but here is see that that needs quite a bit there um, so yeah I've got to continue with that see the shape up here is correct I, I can't sort of remove any more lead that's that'd be just silly so more filler there here you can see where it needs but um overall not that bad not that bad so from this shape here transitioning into this shape obviously before there was the um the molding there so that would sit out a little bit so you know going from a completely new shape that i'm trying to create yes you're going to need a bit of filler you're going to need a bit of something just to get that new shape to flow nicely but there's not much filler there. There's not much filler in it. You would have seen when I applied the filler. I don't like to apply big heavy coats straight off the bat. So it's probably a mill at a time. So it looks like there's a lot there, but there's not, you know? You can see the transition from, 
you know, filler to epoxy, there's no sort of fade. It, it's, it goes really dark straight away, so it looks like there's lots of filler, but there actually isn't that much. So yeah, that's the first rough out. I'll do the same to the other side and continue. I'm on what I believe to be the last skim that it needs. There's just tiny little areas where it needs more filler. But um, do you think the car's trying to tell me something? Have a look where it needs filler. Have a look at that shape, guys. Even's got the little, the little spurts there. Look at that. Ah. Well. What a mission that was. It took me pretty much all week of just skimming and resanding and you know reapplying where it needed it and resanding. I'm not sure if my sanding procedure is um, you know 100% up to scratch. Um, my technique. I tend to find that I was reapplying and re-going over things um, quite a bit because uh, it's it's quite tricky when you haven't got an original shape to go off and you're creating some other new shape sort of thing um, it becomes a little tricky to feel for things and apply here and check with the ruler and see if I'm getting the curves right and everything so this is the end product but um, I'm happy with it it's got a little bit of a curve that way I'm talking really slight like you know you end up with maybe a mil and a half gap at either end um, you know, uh, giving the, the crest in the center. Um, yeah, it, it feels great. It's got a nice curve that way as well, obviously. You can sort of see that curve there. Um, but yeah, having that original vent piece and molding that used to go there and nothing behind it, it gets tricky to create a shape that originally wasn't there. So. I wasn't sure if I should make this edge sharp or, you know, radius it a little bit. I ended up radiusing it a tiny bit and just sort of getting that to flow across that way. Um, that feels better. And then at the end of my drip rail that I've created there, I just sort of finished it off that way. And this um, dip or curve that's in there just sort of blends to nothing by the time it gets to here. Um, I've left that a little bit rough because I've got to continue on with the um, filler work into that quarter panel So I'm not too worried um, This is what I said before about you know um, Blending into other areas I've done so I had done the drip rails before and it's, then this area needed to be finished off and blended um, So that it all sort of worked together. It becomes a little tricky, but I got there in the end But yeah, it, it seemed like a lot of you know reapplying and you when you apply filler it's you know you're hardly getting any on there sometimes you know you just sort of depending on how you lay it on it's half a mil at a time if you're lucky um, so yeah there's not much on there really there's, there really isn't uh, uh, as much filler on there as it looks um, I'm happy the other side ended up pretty much the same didn't need as much work so obviously it ended up a little bit more curved initially from, from when I sheeted it. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad at all. We'll see how it looks now. Once it's in epoxy, you'll, you'll really get the idea. Okay, let's lay the epoxy on. Okay, there we have it. All done. Wow. I'm really happy with that actually. Got a little bit of um, shadowing, but that's fine. Looks good. 
you're always going to get a little bit of shadowing when there's Nikki work and you know you've only gone down to 180 grit before going into the epoxy you know this is not the final stage so this is just to reseal the body filler and then you know any high fill high build work goes on top but um it's nice i'm really happy with the shape how it's turned out looks good exactly what i was after But there we have it guys, another piece done. We're moving on to more bodywork uh, as we continue on. Um, it's good, you know, I'm, I'm getting a bit of a boogie on and, and things are moving, things are getting done. It's, it's great. Um, the bubble bar, I'll continue on with that. That'll be something that I just do in between, you know, waiting for bog to dry or um, epoxy to cure and stuff like that. The epoxy, you've got to give it a couple of days before you give it a sand. If you're going to sand anything or do any work on top of it, you've got to give it a couple of days, you know, to, to fully dry out. Um, but, yeah, I just continue with those sort of mods and stuff like that and onto the boot jam next. So the boot jam area, um, it had a little bit of rust repair on the other side there, which I'll show you once I get into it. And I'll probably do the tail light panel, which has obviously had the mod of um, the petrol fill uh, behind the number plate. So... I've got to work a little bit in that area and then it'll be all that sort of side of things done other than the actual boot lid and then I can continue on with doing the actual quarter panels um, and that's all the sort of solid side of things other than the scuttle panel at the front here it'll be pretty much all the shell side of things oh sorry and the uh, the front apron and radiator support that'll have to be done as well but That'll be everything other than hanging panels done body-wise, um, ready to continue on with high fill. So it's good. Moving along. All right, so that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Please give a like, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. There's heaps of other videos on this channel, guys. So there's um, car events that I go to that I'll film at the drags or old summer nights, um events and car shows, you name it, all sorts of stuff is on there, so just have a bit of a look around if this is your first time on the channel, just see, you'll probably find something that you like and you'll probably be wanting to come back, so subscribe, thanks guys, catch you on the next one.